If you're not receiving dividends, you'll only make money in the stock market when you sell. That's a problem in times like this, this, and this when the market is crashing. Selling during a crash will likely result in you losing money. But what if instead we could hold our investments during a crash and continue to make money while doing so? That's where dividends come in. But the scary part is that we don't know when the next crash will be. It could even be this year. So you need to be prepared in advance. That's why I've put together this video as a complete guide for investing in dividend stocks. First things first, what even is a dividend? A dividend is a payment that shareholders receive from some companies as a reward for owning shares in the company. I say some companies because not all companies pay a dividend. In fact, they're not even required to. Dividend payments can be made monthly, quarterly, half yearly or yearly depending on the company. If I Google McDonald's dividend frequency, I can see that shareholders receive a dividend from the company four times per year or once every quarter. Dividends are paid on what's known as a per share basis, meaning for every share you own, you'll receive a certain level of dividend. Example, if a company pays a dividend of 50 cents per share each month and you own 10 shares, then you'll receive a total dividend payment of $5 each month as a reward for owning those shares. You might be wondering why companies pay a dividend if they don't have to. This just comes down to the strategy of of the company and how they choose to reward shareholders. Tesla, for example, have publicly stated that they have no intention to pay a dividend in the future. That's because their focus is reinvesting the money they earn from their business in order to fuel growth. The idea being that investors will benefit from this in the long run through higher share prices. So if you're investing in a company which doesn't pay a dividend, you need to be very confident that the management team can deliver on that future growth. Coca-Cola, on the other hand, are an example of a company who are committed to paying their shareholders a dividend. In fact, they're so committed that they've increased their dividend every year for the last 60 years. Coca-Cola is obviously a much more mature company than Tesla. You might say that Coca-Cola is an example of a dividend stock, whereas Tesla is an example of a growth stock. What's the difference? Dividend stocks are companies which pay out dividends to their shareholders on a regular basis. For example, McDonald's, Procter and Gamble and Johnson & Johnson. Investors who choose dividend stocks are typically looking to build up a passive income stream, which makes them money regardless of how the market is performing. Dividend stocks de-risk an investment portfolio because they allow you to make money even when prices are falling. More importantly, because dividends are a form of regular realized return on investment, they allow the investor to unlock the power of compound interest. This is achieved by reinvesting the dividend back into the the market so that your dividends are now earning you dividends. Between 1980 and 2019, 75% of the S&P 500's return to investors came from dividends and dividend reinvestment. Growth stocks on the other hand are companies who are expected to grow at a faster rate than the market as a whole. Examples might include Zoom, Shopify and Block. In other words, the market is expecting these companies to be extremely valuable in the future. These companies typically choose to reinvest all of their earnings back into the business instead of paying a dividend to shareholders. Investors who choose growth stocks are looking to earn large capital gains in the future and are willing to miss out on dividend income today in order to potentially achieve their goal. Growth stocks are normally associated with younger companies who are trying to innovate in and disrupt an existing industry. For example, Tesla with the automotive industry. Assuming you've chosen to go down the dividend stock route, you might be asking yourself, how do I know what dividend stocks to invest in. Before we talk about metrics, let's cover two of the most important features of a dividend paying stock, consistency and scalability. Ideally, you want to invest in companies who have a long track record of paying dividends. This tells you that the management of the company is committed to paying that dividend to the shareholder. Because remember, dividends are not mandatory and a company can choose to stop paying a dividend whenever they want. If you're investing in a dividend stock to create a passive income stream, you want to be certain that the dividend is safe. So consistency is important, but what's also important is scalability. Not only do you want to see consistent dividend payments, but you also want to see consistent dividend increases. Obviously, dividend increases are good
good because it means more money in your pocket. But it also shows that the company is expanding profits and cash flows, which in turn allows them to keep increasing the dividend. With that in mind, you should then look at the list of dividend kings and dividend aristocrats. The dividend kings list is made up of S&P 500 member companies who have increased their dividend to shareholders each and every year for at least 50 consecutive years. Now, that is no small undertaking. We're talking about increasing dividend payments throughout the 1987 stock market crash, the dot-com bubble, the Great Recession of 0809, and most recently, the global pandemic. Any company that has managed to do that is clearly committed to maintaining and increasing that dividend for the foreseeable future. And as a dividend investor, that is exactly what you want to see. There are currently 39 stocks which qualify as dividend kings, and any of these companies will be great additions to a dividend portfolio, provided the price is right. Dividend aristocrats are similar to dividend kings, the only difference being that these are companies who have increased their dividend for at least 25 consecutive years. So not quite king status, but still very good. So you have your list of dividend kings and aristocrats, which narrows down your search for the best dividend stocks. But how do you know which companies on that list to go for? This is where metrics come in. We can use certain financial metrics to get a preliminary understanding of how attractive a given dividend stock is as a long-term investment. I say a preliminary understanding because in reality, your research will need to extend beyond a couple of financial ratios. But these three metrics can be very useful for understanding how valuable the dividend is and most importantly, how safe the dividend is. First up is dividend yield. We use the dividend yield metric to figure out what kind of bang for our buck we're getting by investing in a particular dividend paying stock. If you had the choice to invest in company A, which pays a $5 yearly dividend, or company B, which pays a $10 yearly dividend, which would you choose? You'd probably say company B, because it has a higher dividend. But we actually don't have all the necessary information to answer this question. We need to know what the share price of each company is. Even though company B looks like the better choice at first glance, it all depends on what you have to pay to get that dividend. This is where dividend yield comes in. Dividend yield is calculated as the yearly dividend paid by a company divided by its current share price. For example, if company A has a share price of $50 and it pays a yearly dividend of $5, then the dividend yield of its stock is 10%. Whereas if company B has a share price of $200 and it pays a yearly dividend of $10, then the dividend yield of its stock is only 5%. So company A actually gives better value to the investor despite paying a lower dividend per share. The higher the yield, the more dividend we receive relative to our investment. Naturally, the dividend yield of a company will change as the share price changes. Assuming the dividend remains constant, an increase in the share price will reduce the dividend yield, whereas a decrease in the share price will increase the dividend yield. Prices go up, yields go down. Prices go down, yields go up. Essentially, when stock prices are falling, provided the dividend doesn't change, the investment becomes more attractive. And the opposite is true for when prices are increasing. So if you understand that concept, you might be asking yourself, why don't we just invest in the companies with the highest dividend yield? Surely by investing in the companies with the highest yields, we're guaranteeing ourselves the best dividends on the market. This is what's known as a yield trap. Sometimes a company's dividend yield is too good to be true. For example, the share price of a company could fall by 30% because the market is expecting bad earnings for the next 10 years. If that company is paying a dividend, the dividend yield will look very attractive to an unaware investor because the share price has fallen so much relative to the dividend. Prices go down, yields go up. But in reality, the dividend will likely need to be reduced or eliminated in the future if earnings are as bad as the market expects. Point being, it's not wise to invest in a dividend stock just because it has a high yield. You need to go and find out whether there's a reason why the yield is that high in the first place. The next metric to look at is free cash flow. Free cash flow is arguably the most important figure on a set of financial statements, and it's crucial when it comes to dividend investing. Free cash flow is used by companies to pay down 
get to buy back shares and you guessed it to pay dividends. Let me emphasize that free cash flow is used by companies to pay your dividend. So logically, you'll want to invest in the companies who have the strongest free cash flows because more free cash flow equals a safer dividend. Before looking at free cash flow, you should first find out what is the total dollar value of dividends that the company will be paying out to its shareholders. When we have that amount, we can then compare it to the company's free cash flow, which will give us an idea of how safe that dividend is. The quickest way to estimate the total value of dividends is to take the company's market cap, which is how much the company is worth, and multiply it by the dividend yield percentage. Using McDonald's as an example, we'll do two Google searches. One for McDonald's market cap, which can be found beneath the price chart, and one for McDonald's dividend yield. We simply multiply these two results together to get an estimation of the total value of dividends which will be paid by McDonald's. In this case, that figure is $4 billion. Then we look at free cash flow. Free cash flow is calculated as the company's cash from operations minus capital expenditures. Those figures can be found in the cash flow statement of the company's financial statements. Now, fortunately, it's 2022 and there are platforms which make this process very easy. What you're seeing on screen is Seeking Alpha. This is the website I use for all of my investing research. Everything from financial statement analysis to news stories to articles, it has it all. If I type McDonald's into the search bar, head over to financials and then cash flow, not only do I have cash from operations and capital expenditure clearly presented, but I also have 10 years worth of data that I can analyze. So we can see in 2021, McDonald's had cash from operations of $9.1 billion and capital expenditures of $2 billion, giving us a free cash flow figure of 7.1 billion dollars, which is more than enough to cover the expected dividends of $4 billion, which we previously calculated. So we can be comfortable that McDonald's has more than enough cash available to pay its dividends. The last metric I want to cover briefly is the dividend payout ratio. This ratio tells us how much dividends a company is paying relative to its earnings. It's calculated by dividing the company's net income by the dividends paid by the company. The reason why we care about the dividend payout ratio is sustainability. Ability. Think about it logically. If you're investing in a dividend paying stock with the intention of creating a reliable passive income stream for decades, do you really want to see a company paying out 70, 80 or 90% of its earnings as dividends? Probably not. Reason being, if a company is paying out large portions of its earnings as dividends, that leaves very little left over for the purposes of capital expenditure and growth. It's generally accepted that a dividend payout ratio of between 30 and 50% is considered healthy, but this can vary from from industry to industry. For example, real estate investment trusts, better known as REITs, are legally required to pay out 90% of their earnings as dividends to shareholders each year. So how do you check the dividend payout ratio of a company? Again, we can go to Seeking Alpha and under dividends and dividend safety, we can see the dividend payout ratio clear as day with a letter grade rating and other comparative information. Guys, if you value your time when it comes to investing, I highly recommend becoming a Seeking Alpha member and you can get 50% off your membership by using the link in the description of this video. I've been using the website for five years and haven't looked back, so give it a try for yourself. You're now ready to go out and find yourself some great long-term dividend stock investments. But before you do, there's four important dates to be aware of when it comes to companies paying dividends. These are the declaration date, the record date, the ex-dividend date, and the payment date. The declaration date is the date when the company announces an upcoming payment of a dividend. This announcement normally comes in the form of a press release, and it'll contain information like the dollar value of the dividend, the official record date, and the payment date. The record date is the last last day for when the investor must be on the company's shareholder records in order to receive the dividend. So if the company doesn't have a record of your investment by this date, you won't receive the dividend. In order to make sure you receive the dividend, you need to invest before the X dividend date, which is set one business day before the record date. And that's just to allow for the necessary documentation to be processed before the record date deadline. And as you might have guessed, the payment date is the date on which the dividend is paid 
to shareholders. So you should now feel confident enough to start making some investments in dividend stocks. There's always an ongoing dispute around whether dividend investing or growth investing is the better play. Honestly, the answer is probably a bit of both. On the one hand, if none of your investments pay a dividend, then your future returns are totally at the whim of the market. But on the other, if all of your investments pay dividends, then you might be limited in terms of capital appreciation or increases in the share price over time. But don't make the mistake of thinking that dividend stocks equal low growth. Growth is a very important factor for dividend investors. We want to see earnings and free cash flow grow over time, which translates into increasing dividends for shareholders. If you have any questions about dividend investing, which I didn't cover in this video, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.